Hi, and welcome to section 5, Joining Data in D3GS version 5. In this section, you will learn how to bind data on elements directly on JavaScript files or by loading external sources. We are going to explore more methods and write our first functions. So far, we saw how to create elements and how to use basic methods. In this video, we are going to talk about binding data and the methods data and ender. Before we jump into the code, let's first see what is data binding. Binding means to associate elements with data. It allows you to bridge the gap between the data and the elements on your page. Let's jump into our text editors and I will show you an example to understand everything a little bit better. Now the first thing that you are going to do is just change the section 5 into the HTML5 and then I'm going to up GS. I don't need the things from our previous code so I'm just going to delete them and you can do the same thing and maybe even append but I will keep the var element equals d3.select body. Now to the top I'm going to create another variable and the name of this variable is going to be dataset. This is a usual name. So in the dataset I'm going to have an array. This array is going to have some integers but you can pass it whatever you like. Because now we are using d3.js I think it's better to follow this example and just use some integers too. Alright, right after body I'm going to have my first method and this is going to be the select all. Alright, I'm going to call the select all method to select the paragraph tag and although I don't have any paragraph I'm still going to use it. Then I'm going to have an empty selection, right? because we haven't added anything yet. To add something, we will call the data method. This will bind the data to the current selection, so we have to pass the data set as a parameter. Right after that, it's time to move the data to the document, because so far they were in an empty space, and that is what enter does. And then I'm going to call the append method and pass in a paragraph tag. Now the selection is the new paragraph tag. And last but not least, I'm going to add the text method and inside there I'm going to have something like hello section 5. Save and refresh. What do you think you're going to see? Well, I think that you're going to see whatever we have written in the text method and for me, this is hello section 5. Alright, let's go into the console. I'm going to delete this one and then I'm going to hit the up arrow. Here you have your console.log with an element. And there you can see your groups, array and the array of 5. Alright, and the body is 0, just what we expected to see. In the elements tab we can see the same thing. We have 5 paragraphs, although in the HTML or JavaScript file we didn't add any of this. And so now I have one more question for you. How do we confirm that data is binded to the elements? Take a moment to think about it. Alright, did you think about it? Nice. If you click on array 5 and then P and just go down, down, down and below, so in the end you are going to see a data with the number that you have gave. And that's the way to see that your data are actually binded to the elements. And of course you can do the same thing with the other elements too. And that was all the code that we are going to write for this video. So far we saw what is data binding and then the methods data and ender. We created a data set that contains some integer numbers and then we saw the result of these numbers in our browser.